Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Henry sent me a note and said, Steve, check out the story out of New Jersey. And it's being widely reported about an ordinance that's being considered to be passed uh, in a community in New Jersey regarding auto theft. Now, auto theft is obviously a bad thing. And so if there's a way to combat auto theft, that's great. Let's do what we can to, to fight back against auto thieves. The question is, is this ordinance the way to do it? And I would suggest, no, it's not. But I'll explain why. So the ordinance, I have it in my hand, by the way. I simply went and pulled a copy of the proposed ordinance itself. I'm not reading to you from a news article. I'm reading to you directly from the proposed ordinance from the township of Holmdale, county of Monmouth. And it's a proposed ordinance establishing section 3-17 titled Motor Vehicle Protection Regulations. So they have it numbered 3-17 because presumably there's a collection of things uh, and they're saying basically we want to insert this into the laws we already have. And so it starts off with your whereases explaining what they're thinking. And it says, whereas pursuant to New Jersey uh, statutes, the township committee of the township of Holmdale is authorized under state law to establish ordinances to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the township. So we've got the right to do this if it does good for the community. Whereas due to a variety of factors, <laughs> the township and uh, the surrounding area is experiencing a spate of motor vehicle thefts, which has not been adequately addressed by our state government. Now, it actually says by the our state government, but a lot of ordinances have got typos in and they'll clean up later. However, it's a spate of motor vehicle theft and the state ain't doing their job. That's, that's what they say. And it might be true. Whereas, to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of Holmdale, the township committee seeks to adopt certain ordinance provisions that are intended to protect the security of motor vehicles in the township from activities related to theft. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the township committee as follows, section 1, section 3-17, titled Motor Vehicle Protection Regulations, is hereby established. So, if this passes, this will be established. This has not passed yet. They're going to take it up for a vote, I believe, in December. And of course, today is the first day of December, so I should have said later this month. But if I said that, people go, Steve, what month was this video shot in? So, police regulations, subsection, motor vehicle protection regulations, subsection, this purpose of this ordinance is to protect health, safety, and welfare by establishing provisions that are intended to protect the security of motor vehicles in the township from activities related to theft. One, it shall be illegal for a person to enter or remain on any driveway, paved surface, or location within 20 feet of a stationary motor vehicle, knowing that he or she is not licensed or privileged to be, enter, or remain in said location, and commits any of the following acts. So the entire thing is premised on you being <laughs> on a driveway, paved surface, or location within 20 feet of a stationary motor vehicle, knowing that you are not licensed or privileged to be, enter, or remain in the location. If you do any of the following, one, peers into a window of a motor vehicle the person does not own or have a license or privilege to possess. So if you are <laughs> within 20 feet of a motor vehicle that you don't have any right to be in, and you peer in the window, boom, you violate this ordinance. What are you doing peering in the window of that car? <laughs> you might say, Steve, what does it mean to peer into a window? I mean, we kind of know what it means, but is this a legal term? No, it's not. It's not. They simply wanted to say that you were looking into the window, but presumably peering into the window is a little more than just a glance. And I looked it up, and one dictionary definition was to look keenly, to look keenly. So to be looking with some kind of intent beyond just, oh, I'm scanning around and I accidentally looked at your car. Dude, I'm I, sorry, I didn't mean to look at your car like that. So if you, if you peer into the window of a motor vehicle, the person does not own or have license or privilege to possess. You can peer into the window of your own car. You can peer into the window of a car that someone's letting you drive. Uh, if I toss the keys, go, hey, go get my car. You can peer into the window of the car as you approach it. But then you'd have the license to do so. 
We'll get back to that. You cannot pull the door handle or take an action in an attempt to open or unlock a motor vehicle that the person does not own or have license or privilege to possess. Now, the interesting thing here is it does not use the word enter, <laughs> which is the obvious one. You shouldn't walk up and pull the door handle on a car you've got no right to enter. But it says here that you can't do that if you've got no right or license or privilege uh, to, to uh, possess the vehicle, to possess the vehicle. Uh, and then also you cannot possess an electronic device that is capable of determining if an electronic key is located inside a motor vehicle. And I've seen articles about that, that you can buy a scanner of sorts that uh, uh, looks for signals of, of remote key fobs. And then it, it somehow interferes and plays with that signal to get the vehicle to think that the key fob is being used for that purpose. And so it's illegal to possess such a device, uh, especially if you're apparently... Um, uh, on a driveway, paved surface, or location within 20 feet of a stationary motor vehicle. Okay, so you got one of those devices. And by the way, that's going to be the easiest one to get. Uh, if you got caught for that, they'd say, okay, uh, you're walking around a place where there's cars and, and you got that device on you. What, what are you doing? And so it gets back to the idea before I mentioned before, like lock picks, uh, which legally are often called pick locks. And uh, a lock pick is perfectly legal for you to own until you use it with uh, uh, an unlawful purpose or until you have it on you while you're committing a crime. So if they catch you breaking into a building with a lockpick, uh, they'll get you for the use of burglary tools. But if you're in your own yard practicing how to rake a master lock number five, <laughs> they can't do a darn thing about it because that's just a hobby that a lot of people have after watching The Lock Picking Lawyer, one of the greatest channels on YouTube. No relation to me. He's just a lawyer who's got a cooler hobby than I do. <laughs> Meanwhile, it shall be illegal for a person to be present inside a motor vehicle if another occupant of the motor vehicle committed a violation of the above. So if you're with somebody and you got into a vehicle after they peered into it, you might be guilty of something. So we'll get back, by the way, to the language. But first, I want to talk about what happens to you. Any person violating the provisions of this section shall, upon conviction thereof, Punishable by a fine of not more than $2,000 or by imprisonment for a term not to exceed 90 days or both such fine and imprisonment in the discretion of the judge. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the minimum penalty shall be a fine of $1,000 for the first offense, $2,000 for each second or subsequent offense. Uh, each act that constitutes a violation of the ordinance should be considered a separate and distinct act that constitutes its own violation. And there's some other stuff in here about what happens if the statute uh, portions of it are found to be unlawful, but other portions are not, severability, uh, and so on, and how this repeals any other statutes it conflicts with. But the important thing here is, let's get back to language, because there's something here I think is very, very important for people to hear. And that is that it says that it shall be illegal for a person to enter or remain on any driveway, paved uh, surface, or location within 20 feet of a stationary motor vehicle knowing that he or she is not licensed or privileged to be, enter, or remain in said location. So you, you're, in essence, being declared a trespasser if you're within 20 feet of a stationary motor vehicle or on the pavement near one, and you peer into the window of a car, or you pull the handle. Okay? Now, what I want to get to, though, is it says that you are not licensed or privileged to be, enter, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And a lot of people, I'd say about once a month since I started my channel, about once a month, someone sends me a note and says, hey, Steve, a trick question. Show me your law license. And I go, well, I'm admitted to the State Bar of Michigan. I have a certificate that says I've been admitted. Uh, and I also have a bar card which says that I'm a member. And they go, but that's not a license, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Why isn't it a license? And they go, well, show it to me. Show it to me. I want to see your license. And I go, not all licenses are objects that are visible. What are you talking about? My driver's license is, yeah, the driver's license is an unusual example. It's actually the outlier. A driver's license, having a thing in your possession that says driver's license or operator's license is unusual because many of the licenses you have, you cannot actually see or show people, here's my license. So for instance, when you get a ticket, to go in and see a rock and roll band play a show at a venue, you have a license to enter the venue, go sit in your seat and watch the show. Show me your license. Well, I've got a ticket. It's not a license, is it? 
And so I know some people are going, Steve, really? Yes, really. But let's, let's, let's play along here for a second. You go camping and you've got a driver's license. You are legally allowed to drive a car in the state you are in. So you're driving and you go camping. While you're camping, a bear steals your wallet. A bear steals your wallet and you actually see the bear take your wallet over to the side of the clearing there and he eats your wallet with all its contents, including your driver's license. And the bear wanders off and does whatever bears do in the woods. Can you drive home? Yes, you can. Can you drive home legally? Yes, you can. I'm a lawyer. Trust me. You can drive home legally. You have a license to drive. But Steve, the bear ate my license. Well, he ate the thing that's evidence of your license. The license itself is a concept. So if you were to contact the state, let's suppose you're in Michigan, you contact the state and say, hey, does this person have a license? They look you up and go, yeah, you do. You think the bear reported the state that he ate your license? But it wouldn't matter if he did. So the bear calls the Secretary of State's office and goes, I just ate this guy's license. He's got no license anymore. You know what they'd say? Number one, talking bear, pretty cool. Number two, our records show he's still got a license. The license is the concept that you have the right to do something granted to you by somebody else. And that's why this statute repeatedly says things such as person does not own or have a license or privilege to possess the car. Show me the license that says that you have the right to possess your car. Well, I can show you the title. I can show you the registration. Oh, but neither of those are licenses. Yes, they are. They're licenses that show you that I own it and I have the right to possess it. And I have the right to drive it on the roads. It just depends which license you're talking about. But a driver's license, that little thing in your wallet, is evidence of your right to drive. And the fact that you have it or don't have it does not affect or impact your legal right to drive. Now, somebody's going to go, Steve, my understanding is you can get a ticket for driving without your license. Uh, it's actually in Michigan to be called no ops, meaning you have no operator's permit on your person. They don't get you for driving without a license. Unlicensed driver is different than a person who's driving who is licensed but doesn't have the operator's thing on them. That's all. That's all. So the license is the theoretical right to do something. And so I am licensed as an attorney. Uh, doctors are licensed to practice medicine. When I had tickets to go see my morning jacket at Meadowbrook Theater in Rochester, Michigan, uh, I had a license to enter the facility, go find my seat, sit in that seat, stand in front of the seat when they played One Big Holiday, and sit back down when they played the slower stuff. I had a license. Show me your license. Well, I can show you the tickets, but it's not... It's, so don't get this thing in your head that this piece of plastic is the license that allows you to drive. Piece of plastic is evidence of your license, but your license was granted to you by the state, and it's simply the legal right to do something. So getting back to the vagaries of this statute, you cannot pull the door handle or take any action in an attempt to open or unlock a motor vehicle that the person does not own or have a license or privilege to possess. I would like to see it say, or enter. <laughs> My concern with this statute is if you take a look at it and go, let's, let's look at the extremes, the edges, the things that could happen under it if it got passed. And it says it shall be illegal for a person to enter or remain on any driveway, paved surface, or location within 20 feet of a stationary motor vehicle, knowing that he or she is not licensed or privileged to be enter or remain in said location. That's the first thing. So let's suppose that you were in a parking lot of a Meyer or Publix or Piggly Wiggly, and you're within 20 feet of a motor vehicle, and it's a location, and you haven't bought anything in the store. You're in the parking lot, but you have not bought anything in the store. And you are, you are in the parking lot, and a police officer looks over and he thinks he sees you peering into the window of a motor vehicle. Now, you'll notice it does not say um, peering into the window from a certain distance or anything. The implication is that you could be peering into the window of a car from 20 feet away. <laughs> and since you haven't bought anything at the store yet, theoretically, you, they could argue and say you don't have a right to be there. You haven't bought anything at the store yet. Now, you could say I was planning on going into the store, 
But of course, as you're going into the store, no, they saw you peering into the window of that car and you stopped. Police officer walks up and says, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just, I'm about to go into the store there. Oh, you have not gone to the store yet, have you? No, I've not. And as you were walking this way, you peered into the window of that car. And I'll let you know right now, I don't always get the best spot in the parking lot. Occasionally, I got to park back here. And if the door is here and I got to park here, I could walk down the middle of the aisle and down the aisle here and go into the store. Sometimes I cut between cars as I head over. I sometimes do. Now, I try to avoid strangers. If I see someone getting into their car, I won't cut down between their car and the car next to it. You know, I, I tend to avoid people in public. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you right now that I have occasionally gone and zigzagged through the parking lot just taking the most direct route to get to the front door. Theoretically, if I was doing this in New Jersey, township of Holmdel, county of Monmouth, uh, a police officer would go, hey, hang on a second. I just saw you peering in the windows of all these cars as you walked by. And I go, no, I just glanced down to make sure I didn't want to bump into the car or something. I don't want to get snagged on a rear view mirror. No, no, no. You were peering into the cars. You are peering into the cars. And so I think that this is a very, very poorly worded statute. And I'm not even sure this is enforceable due to that. Because if a statute is so vague and overbroad that it basically makes everything criminal, uh, generally speaking, courts don't like that. And... You and I both know what will happen with a statute like this, okay? Um, they're going to enforce it in certain places and not other places. They're going, to go to, they're going to go to particular places, and they're going to say, oh, we're going where the crime is. We're going where the crime is. Uh, and crime might occur more in one parking lot than it might in another parking lot. But that doesn't mean that everything is happening in that parking lot is a crime. And so what's going to happen is someone is going to get arrested and... The police are going to say, this guy was peering into the window of that car. Cops are going to go, he was right up against the car looking in the window. Guy's going to go, no, I was 30 feet away and I was watching the car. I thought it was a cool looking car. And uh, by the way, uh, just to let you know, uh, I have a Viper. Looks a lot like that, but bigger. <laughs> I actually fit inside my Viper. And I bring it to Cars and Coffee. And Cars and Coffee, people are milling around cars the whole morning. And now people are respectful. And I've never had anybody walk up to my car and try to open the door. But I often do have it sitting there with the windows rolled down and the hood up. And I have no problem if somebody comes by to Cars and Coffee and leans into the engine compartment, looks at the engine. And I've also got no problem if somebody comes by and peers in the window. That's why I rolled the window down. So what's going to happen... If, if they ever, <laughs> what's going to happen if they ever have a Cars and Coffee in New Jersey? Um, <clears throat> so keep in mind, this is not a statewide thing. This is just a township of Holmdel ordinance, which could get passed, has not been passed yet, but in my mind is extremely vague. And <clears throat> getting back to the example I said, where the police officer arrests somebody and says he's peering in the windows of cars. And the guy goes, I was not peering in the windows of cars. Okay. Problem, of course, is, Police officers can go, well, I don't have any of this on film. I, 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 I'm not wearing a body camera for whatever reason. Um, and because I was walking around, the camera in my car didn't pick it up. And, of course, the defendant is probably not going to testify because you don't want to testify for a defendant because you don't have to. And so the cop gets on the stand and goes, yeah, he's walking around peering in the windows of cars. And uh, it's against the law. And so you're going to have a problem with this statute being enforced, like I say, willy-nilly. And the first few examples of it better be good because if they catch somebody breaking into a car and say, yeah, we, we observed the guy walk up, peer in the windows, walk around, furtively glance around him to see if anybody's watching, and then he jumped in the car and was trying to hotwire it when we caught him. Well, yeah, then you got that guy all day long on this. But you probably had him with other statutes that are already in the book. So that's the thing because if they literally decide to test this with some guy walking through a parking lot, but he had no right license or et cetera to, to, to be there or you know in one of those cars, then you're going to have a real hard time because up on appeal, an appeals court's going to go, wait, how far can this thing be stretched now? That doesn't sound like a very good law. So Henry, thanks for sending it. That's the proposed statute. We'll see if it passes sometime later this month. 
questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. It took a while for her to figure out she could run, but when she did, she was long, long gone.